Kodiak Island, Alaska. It's gonna be quite the adventure. You gotta love this spring weather. Kodiak Island is an incredible spot. You have to fly or take about a 12 hour ferry to get here. So very remote. It's the second largest island in the US. It's also home for the largest of the grizzly bears. And like a lot of coastal Alaska, most of the time it's wet and rainy. So do you want to go island hopping? So here you go. What I had in mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh look, here it is. We're at the Kodiak Baptist Mission here where they have their heritage ranch. At the ranch, there's a lot of goats. We also have pigs, some horses, and they have about 22 cattle just offshore on an island that we're going to be looking at while we're here. Hi, guys. Hello. How are you? Good. You must be Dr. Dan. Great that you make it. Yes. yes. Good to meet you. So today I'm working with Dr. Dan. 2017 was my first year here, oh, so I guess cool. four years now. He lives and works in Wisconsin, but he comes to Kodiak twice a year to help with a lot of farm work. And Kelly Foreman runs the show here, and Sierra and Meyer along as well, and we're all gonna be flat out busy this week. Hey. All right, we're right over here. Okay. They're all relaxing, you know, after the morning yeah. milking. Oh, how cute is that? <laughs> oh my gosh, look at the wide load there. She's super pregnant. Probably gonna have a couple of births while oh. you're here. So we are in baby goat season, and that is really challenging. We have about 40-ish goats. Uh, it just depends on what day it is and how many kids we've had that day and how much sleep we've had to be able to count how many goats that we do have. It gets a little bit crazy. One of the goats has been lame. Yes, Fidget. She's over here actually on her knees. Oh, yeah. You can see her. She's our earless goat. She actually lost her ears to frostbite. Whoa, dude. So Fidget is one of my middle-aged milking does, and just in the last couple of months, she started to go down on her knees, not being able to walk normally. Oh, baby. The quality of life that our animals have, and it's really important to me, and I don't want to see Fidget in pain. Sorry, princess. So as I'm watching Fidget, I see that she's looking pretty good, except for the fact that she's on her knees. You're mad about it, huh? I mean, that looks awful, but she looks bright, she's alert, she's cruising around, eating. Oh, fidget. When we encourage her to stand up, she can. She walks a few steps, but then she gets right back down. So that tells me there's something painful in her feet or the action of walking that's making it difficult for her. Yeah, I'd say everywhere. You know, all four yeah, feet. Yeah, all four feet. She yeah. seems real ouchy. Like, yeah. just every, every right. step is, yeah. is hurting. Kelly had contacted me uh, about a month ago. She's pretty concerned about Fidget. All right, let's get you up. She doesn't even remember her being injured. It came on fairly suddenly. You know, in goats, there's some infectious diseases, a viral disease that can cause some lameness. Sometimes past injuries could cause that. So I I'm very concerned with what we might find here. So. So as I'm looking at her feet, I'm looking for reasons why they're going to be sore. Now, I would expect in a really wet environment, they be they can be getting a lot of foot rot. Looking good. Absolutely nothing in there. Like perfect skin. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not seeing any sign of foot rot or anything like that. I see very healthy looking hooves. Absolutely no swelling in any of her joints. <laughs> Aw, that hurts. I'm sorry. She's flinching. I mean, she, yeah. she does not She's, like you yeah, like that's feeling tender. her there at all. Really, the only thing I'm finding is as I'm touching her, her toes and between her toes, she's flinching. It's very tender there. So why don't we start getting some x-rays then? I do not have access to a portable x-ray machine. So having Dr. Oakley, it's just wonderful. All right, Bridget, let's get your... And then. Good. OK, that one looks good. Kodiak Island is remote. We do not have the large animal vet here. To have Dr. Oakley and Dr. Dan here together, it's amazing. Better get the udder out of the way here. I'm the udder holder, designated udder holder. The glamorous side of veterinary medicine. That one looks good. I don't actually have a folding table, but I do have a goat table. She's itchy. My table is very well behaved. She's happy to have some attention, and I'm happy to have a table. So it's a win-win. <laughs> Don't do it, don't do it. Goats are a lot of fun, but they're definitely a little bit of a nuisance sometimes. They start chewing your hair, chewing your equipment. Uh-oh. 
You have to have eyes everywhere when you're working with goats. Okay, let's have a look. Ooh. Hmm. That's weird. Ooh. I feel like the density is way less in these two bones than... Mm -hmm. And I definitely see arthritis there and around the yeah. edge there. I'm definitely seeing a little bit of fuzziness, a little bit of arthritis. We're also seeing some inflammation down around the bone called the navicular bone, and that can be seen when you have a little bit of laminitis. That's an inflammation in their hooves that makes it really painful to walk on them. The biggest part is you just don't want them to be in pain. It wouldn't be a bad idea then to be treating her with an anti-inflammatory. It might take a few days of it, but then yep. she should be up walking. I'm thrilled to know that we may be able to do something to keep her here. Okay, we can get her started on some treatment. Yeah. Get her feeling better. Sounds good. We have like the dream team in the goat pen. It's really worked out perfect. Are y'all ready to catch your horse? My name's Johnny Walker. I'm actually the director of the Baptist Mission, as hard as that might be to believe. We're getting ready to catch that bay right there, the one with the black mane. That horse is called Marlin, but his nickname's Alligator Bill because he's bit so many people. He might be a little hard to catch there. We got, once they get wind of you, they get a little smart. We're gonna catch him and then take him, put him on the boat, take him across that water there to that island. Johnny first came to Kodiak from West Virginia so that kids could ride ponies. We have a giant summer camp here. Uh, about 150 kids come, and one of the most popular programs we have is our riding program. He has a way with horses. He has so much patience. Good morning, gentlemen. He's actually legitimately like a horse whisperer. He's that guy. Good boy. So today we need to transport Marlin over to Woody Island to spend the summer. Come on, come on, let's go. Come on. So we have the cattle over there. So he'll be able to help round up the cattle, but you can also pull him in for pony rides for the summer campers that come over. Hey, Mr. Walker, are we ready? We're all set. So the goal is to get him onto the boat, across the channel, and out onto the beach without any difficulty. Here we go. Marlin, you get to go be free. How lucky are you? Right. Yeah, that's cool. We're gonna be doing the Alaska version of island hopping. He's actually gonna go on the front of what's called the landing craft, which is a boat that can actually pull right up on a beach. But horses can be pretty skittish. They are prey animals. Their uh, go-to is to run and get out of the way or the kick. So, you know, if they're not used to certain sounds or flashes of movement, they can definitely explode. This is about as hard a thing as you're ever gonna do with a horse. Okay. Just yeah. load him in that little bobbin stall down there. Okay, no sedation needed? No. Well. We'll see. Hopefully not. One of the reasons I'm here is if things get really rowdy and we see that he's just not going to have it, I will go ahead and give him a quick sedation. Also, if Marlon ends up with any injuries, lacerations, just in case, I'm ready. Might be a little intense. I always get nervous when we transport a horse. If that horse jumps out of the boat, you aren't going to save it. Are you good, Johnny? It's a little boat and a big horse. You know, we don't want him to try to jump over the side. I mean, obviously, and tip the boat over. You know, the horse has the ability to sink the boat if he wants to. Next hour or two, we're pretty nerve-wracking. The second that that horse gets on, pull that gate shut quick. Putting a horse in a little box and getting him out in the water is not a natural act. All of them are skittish when they get on the boat. Hey, 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 hey. He is antsy. He does not appreciate this. So Dr. Oakley is helping, um, feeding him. 
This reminds me like we're really nervous. Yeah. What's something you're like, just give me chocolate. Just give me chocolate. Yeah, there it was. He just gave me the little alligator. Yeah. Marlon's nervous. Just doing a lot of like excited, nervous things and also doing a little bit of nervous eating. It's like chomp, chomp, chomp. You know, he's just grabbing the food. Alligator Beal. <laughs> he feels to me like he's ready to explode. Even, oh, they get mad. Oh, whoa. He, his eyes are nervous. Hey, they're okay. Hold on, Marlon, here we go. Time is of the essence. We need to get him to the island. Ow, stop it. He bit me. No. Like it's nervous, that little bite comes right in there. He really, huh. <laughs> We're almost there. And Marlon reaches over and nips Kelly. I mean, he's like, let me off this boat. He's trying to turn around, look behind him, I think almost to look for a way to get off on his own. So it's time to get him over there before he ratchets this up anymore. Easy. Almost there. Easy. Almost there, buddy. Everybody to the back a little bit. Back. As we're getting closer to see all the islands in the distance, most of them with black sand beaches and cliffs, I know later I'm gonna enjoy it, but right now I really just wanna get this horse off the boat and then I can look around and appreciate it. Oh my gosh, they're running. That's so funny. <laughs> they're hollering back at us, hear them? <laughs> There's the horses. Oh yeah, there they come. Yeah, here comes your buddy. <laughs> They gave a couple hollers to the cows, and all the cows and the horses came, too. He totally just saw everybody. Oh, who is that? Did you see your friend? Suddenly, Marlon sees the horses. And when he sees them, it's like, that's all. He's just locked in. That's all he wants to look at. They start calling to each other, which is very common when horses see each other from a distance. There's a few whinnies to greet each other. <laughs> oh, look at us. Oh. Cute! Your buddy's back! Oh, it's like he's got his own fan club, his own like welcoming committee who are like, yes, you made it, buddy. Hurry, 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 hurry. Got him? Got him. All right. Hey, can you turn, friend? You did it, buddy. All right, he'll jump, Michelle. Yep. Come on, buddy. You got it. You can do it. Come on, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready to be free? Oh, yeah, you're ready. All right, All back right. Up. There you go. Oh. <laughs> nice. Look how happy they are. He's like, vacation! It went good. He's free here. He can go anywhere he wants. Everybody's happy. Oh, my gosh, those cattle are so cute. Well, this is Woody Island, and we have 600 acres here. We have 22 cows now. We have one bull, and on an island where we depend on boats to bring food and this and that, this is our emergency food pantry you're looking at behind me here. It's one of the few places left where you have thousands and thousands of acres of free range, so a lot of the, the beef cattle and other animals are free range here. And also, you aren't going to have that Kodiak brown bear on the island. So it's a relatively safe place to have livestock. Oh my god. The cow is trying to get on the boat. Buttercup. Basically, all of these cattle are feral, except for Miss Buttercup. Hello, Buttercup. Hello. She was a bottle-raised baby that they had back at Heritage Ranch. They raised her up and brought her out here. She's still willing to come right up to us and, you know, basically get up in all of our business. Oh, hey there, Buttercup, Butterscotch, Butterball. And here he comes. Here comes the bull, the man that we've come to see. He's just finally making his way, catching up with the rest of the cows. The goal is to have that one bull breed the rest of the cattle. To be able to have sustainable agriculture, you need babies. And so we need to have some pregnant cattle. Watch that back rear that right side, and occasionally you see him take a little misstep with it. Which maybe explains why he's moving slow. He's two years old. He got hurt sometime when he was one year old. He's 
started limping and it was very, very noticeable. To the point that we came over here and put him down and he seemed a little better. And we decided to let him try it. And to date, he has not had any calves. He has to be able to move with the herd. He has to be able to get up and mount the cows. And if he's got a bad leg, that can be very difficult. And some bulls, because of injuries, they can no longer breed. If he does have a bum leg and he's not able to breed, yep. then we don't want to keep him here. So that's what we'd like to get checked. As I'm watching him move, I can definitely see a lameness. The most obvious sign is he's actually dragging the toe. He's not really lifting that leg up. I'm going to get out the dart gun. Now we're loaded for bull. Keep your eye on him, though. He's unpredictable. He's got that extra stuff running through his body. OK. He's in charge here. He's very much in charge. Because if I come in from the back, then maybe I'll hold still a little bit. If I'm coming after him, all bets are off. He could turn and, and charge me. Dan's doing a great job. See, Dan's got him locked in. It's basically like a matador trying to hold him in place for me. Ouch. It looked like a bullseye to me. I mean, this is basically our only chance to check this bull out, to see why he's kind of dragging his foot. You know, if he's got that serious of a leg injury, he's not likely to feel up to breeding. Oh, there he goes. He laid down. Now we're going to go ahead and start putting his leg through range of motion and really checking it out. Why don't we rotate him onto this side since we're going to be checking out the other foot? Yeah. That's better. The hooves are looking, looking good, though. No obvious injuries at all. Definitely no fractures, no sign of a, like a nail or a piece of metal in there. Between his feet, no, no warts or anything like that. Nothing uncomfortable there. No, it's there. actually an amazingly pretty good looking foot. Yeah, it, it is. Looking between his toes, like between the two claws, I see very healthy skin, no sign of any lesions or scabs. So we're going to go ahead and take some x-rays and make sure we don't see fractures, arthritis, anything like that that we need to address. So you get worried when your one bull that you are banking on does not breed the rest of the cattle. We really like this little bull. Hello, friend. There we go. Yeah, those look really good. I don't see any sign of any swelling. There's no foreign body. So looking at the x-rays, I see a very normal hind foot. I mean, all the bones going down into the two claws of his hoof are totally normal. So we suspect this is probably a slowly resolving nerve injury. Like I, what I picture happening if he's dragging that is almost like he's splayed yes. on the ice, yep. right? And then yep. that's when they drag it. Time to wake our boy up. Very common in cattle when they're out running around in the ice and snow is they will slay one leg out. And when they do that, that stretches the nerves that are basically in the groin. And then they can drag that leg for quite a while. And it will resolve sometimes, but it can take months to do that. Do you think he's in pain at all? No, I don't really. Like, he really was moving pretty well. That was my concern, if he was hurting 24-7. That's super good news. Look out, girls. I think a number of them are paying attention to what we're saying. <laughs> Buttercup. I would suspect he's been able to breed for a while now, since it, it is a slow injury, and he's probably been getting better quite a bit over the last couple months. Aw, buddy. So the next test now is basically to see if he actually did the deed. How about this one, Doc? That looks like a good one. Now we're going to go have a look at the cows and see if they're pregnant. OK, she's right here. Might be able to sneak a shot over a horse. If one's pregnant, then it's likely he's got a lot of pregnant cows here. Nice. nice. Watch out. Marlin. Marlin, leave her be. They always know when they're sedated. Here she is. If these girls turns up pregnant, then we're gold. If not, we'll have to replace him with another bull. 
So we're kind of worried about him. He's actually super important to us. Can I have the ultrasound? I just want to be really sure. So Johnny and I have made a bet here. He believes she's pregnant. I say there's no way. There's no possible way that she's pregnant. I'm thinking, like, was this leg injury bad? Could he knock it around? Um, so we'll see. Okay. Uh -oh. A lot is riding on this preg check. I mean, if she's not pregnant, the bull is going to be benched. So it's important that he's doing his job if he wants to stay here in this little slice of heaven he's got going on. So she is definitely pregnant. No way. Yeah. Told you. Shut up. No, I don't. Me, no, me I don't. The dang cow is pregnant. Totally lost a bet. But in all in all reality, I'm so excited about that. That shows that we'll be able to continue on this herd. Apparently our boy here is doing his job. <laughs> That's a game changer for us. The best news I've had probably this month to find out that that gal was pregnant. It just made my day. That leads me to believe that he's impregnated the rest of these gals. So we're very happy and we have no plans on changing him out. Good Here she job. goes. Ever since the doc showed up, good things have been happening, right? I mean, she comes over here and gives us the news that we do have pregnant cows. She looks at our bull and says he's got another round left in him. Maybe she'll find a buried treasure chest before we get home. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes a plan comes together, huh? Yep. Bye, Buttercup. Okay, we need to go, like, right now. No. This morning, Dan came running in and said this horrible tragedy has happened where Chester, Kelly's son, puppy, got underneath the tires of the four-wheeler while Kelly was driving, and apparently she rolled over him twice. Oh. Hey, it's Kelly. Fine. Oh, no. When did it happen? Eight minutes ago. Oh, this is such a nightmare. Uh-oh. As soon as we open the door into Kelly's basement, Chester does not look good. He is in complete shock. His gums are totally pale and white, but he's scared. And the very first thing we're gonna do is pop an IV in and basically treat him for shock, make sure he's warm, make sure he's comfortable and getting lots of fluids. I'm very worried about Chester. Poor baby. And his heart's racing a little bit because he's in shock. Yes, we'll get the blood pressure monitor on him too. Awesome. There we go, buddy. Okay. I was driving really slow. I turned the corner, and then you just hear the thud. We picked him up, and Gracie came running. And all the things you learn as a farm kid, you just say, hold him and love him. Hold him as close as you can, because this might be it. And just as long as he knows that you love him till the very end. Chester is barely moving. He's drooling like crazy. Shock in and of itself could be dangerous because it's kind of causing a cascade of events. I think he's got a little abrasion. Yeah, his gum. Right there, yeah. See that? They can't go into shock and die from shock itself, where your your organs, your brain, uh, your heart's just not getting enough enough blood. This temperature's coming back up. So that's really good. Yeah. Everything's stable now, but we're going to leave him on IV fluids. It's amazing how fluids can kind of keep him going. But now we've got to, you know, take a deep breath and do a very calm and collected assessment to see what the extent of the trauma is. That sounds weird. Lungs sound a little raspy. He's gurgling a little bit as he's breathing. It definitely sounds rough. It could mean damage to internal organs and internal bleeding. So we're gonna get out the ultrasound and figure this out. I wanna look for any sign of abdominal bleeding. If he's bleeding internally, we need to basically jump the surgery somehow here. Chester is Grayson's dog. He'd wake up at 4.45 in the morning, come work the dairy, 
to earn everything he needed to be able to buy Chester. And since that day, it was, they've been inseparable. If Grayson lost Chester, it would just shatter him. But I definitely don't see any extra fluid in there. So all of that looks normal. I'm very relieved to see all the organs kind of look to be in the normal spot. Also, I'm not seeing a lot of extra fluid. A little bit, for sure. There's a little bit of bleeding in his belly, but it's not a lot, and it's not increasing. So that's a really good sign. These little kick reflex. Checking his reflexes, they're a little slow. He replaces it, but slowly. Take it off. He doesn't seem to know where his legs are underneath him. As I'm moving his feet, there's definite spinal cord trauma. He's really not able to use his hind legs properly at this point. I'm really concerned about a broken back or a broken pelvis. So we're going to set up for x-rays as well. I actually told him, I said, I don't believe that there is any hope, but we will try. What did I tell you to do? Pray. All right, why don't we start getting some x-rays then? I'm not gonna stretch him out because he's sore. I'm trying to get some chest x-rays first. I wanna make sure I don't see any sign of the fractures of the ribs. Okay, great. But also getting rolled over by a wheel can cause some bleeding in the lungs and that can also make the raspy, kind of heavy lung sound. Right. Here are the x-rays if you want to take a look. The diaphragm looks fine. Oh, yeah. Amazingly, I don't see any fractures there. Let's look further back. OK, that looks pretty darn good, too. Yeah, his pelvis is looking fine. Yeah. Oh, that's so lucky. Yeah. yeah. Looking at the chest, I don't see any sign of lapsed lung. There's no rib fractures. The lungs do look a little bit cloudy, so that's likely some bleeding, but nothing that's really scary, and that's something that can resolve on its own over a few days. And I think the best news of all is we don't see any fractures. I don't know how he made it underneath two big four-wheeler tires without any fractures, but everything actually is lined up and where it should be. Sometimes I feel like when they're soft and young and squishy, they just kind of like roll through it yeah. somehow. Knowing that Chester does have damage to his spinal cord means something happened and it can progress over time. Yeah, so no fractures. And pelvis looks totally normal, so that's fantastic. He's gonna be a sore puppy, but we'll give him some pain meds and, yep. you know, it'll be a couple weeks of keeping him quiet. Yep. There's so much relief and joy. I'm super happy. Oh my God, I like, I am ecstatic. Oh, great. I mean, oh, what off chance do we have two vets? Not only on the island, but here, for me, that's a god thing, so. <laughs> Kelly's turned to me a couple times now and said, you know, thank God you were here. I just can't believe you guys are here. And I, I'm feeling the same way. I'm just so grateful we were here to help. What a lucky puppy. Let's flip pigs. Today is piglet castration day. We have five to do today. They're about 40-ish pounds, and we're gonna sedate each one. Hi. We're also keeping an eye over on Alexa in the pen next door. She has been in active labor for quite a while, like 24 hours, but she still hasn't progressed to be pushing out kids. Our unicorn goat, Alexa. Alexa the goat, um, we kind of call her the unicorn goat because she has one horn. She hasn't had a baby before, and it's always a little bit tricky for a first-time mom, and we want to make sure that we're there. When she does kid, we don't want her to have problems. All right, Maya, you can help me. I'll flip it. You need to stabilize it while I inject it. Here we go. Six-week-old piglets are like naughty puppies. They're silly, whipping around, screaming at the slightest movement. So when you're trying to sedate them, they're a bit of a pain. Zip, up, 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 up. Move it, move it. Right, right. Oh. 
Okay, wait. <laughs> they scream if you touch them, if you try and pet them, if you try and move them a certain way, no matter what you are doing to them. I am just making <laughs> They only have one level, which is scream. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh my gosh. Castrations are usually pretty simple, but I am so sensitive to like loud noises. And that pig squeal is like something from another planet. Okay. Flippity flip. Okay. okay. You can out of here. Ready? Okay, injected that one. So away. Let's get them into the crate. Even though there was a bit of squealing, it's working. We're gonna double team it today and just do them boom, boom, and try to get all five of them done quickly. All right. This one's heavy. Yeah, this one's fat. Get in there. This is our little uh, swine mash set up here. Mobile Army Swine Hospital? Yes. I think they're already looking sedate. Incoming, incoming pigs. <laughs> Beautiful smiley thing. I love our clinic setup out here in the trees in the open air, kind of prepared for every eventuality. No, the cat's back. Except for a barn cat jumping onto our surgical site out of nowhere. <laughs> no, you don't. Cookie the cat is one of the farm cats here, and I think she would be a great clinic cat, but she is getting a little bit nosy now. Thank you, Penny. Good yes, job. Penny. Good job. Penny is at least keeping her in check. All right. Oh, usually castrations are very quick, but hopefully we don't see any that have hernias, and that makes castrations really tricky. Okie dokie, pig number one. Oh, little piggy. Come on, friend. There you go. There we go. Do you want me to take your p testicles? You can take the pig's testicles, okay. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> Awkward conversations between new friends. <laughs> okay. Who's next? Oh. Okay. Oh. Okay, this one has a huge hernia. Oh, no. We're clipping through these castrations, and all of a sudden, I see a ginormo hernia. Gosh darn it. <laughs> hernia means there's a hole in the abdominal wall uh, right in the region where the testicle comes through. That can be a much more complicated procedure. So that's a hernia. The intestines come out right into that scrotum. Ooh, I can feel it. As I'm getting my fingers kind of pressing in his groin area to feel the hernia, my heart kind of sinks. So big! It's massive. You can feel that ring, that kind of area that's open, the hernia ring, is quite large. So that's going to be a bugger to close up. I mean, it can be tricky to repair these hernias. I mean, one risk, you could cut open the intestines accidentally. This is going to be a lot more serious than we thought. Is your making the incision on my fingers right? Okay. Right sure. on that hernia? Okay, sure. This is going to be tricky to close that area that's open, the hernia ring. And I'm thrilled that Dan and I are doing this together because it's great to suddenly have an extra set of hands. Dr. Dan's going to push the hernia back in. We're going to have to push the intestines down into the abdominal wall and hold them while we can kind of like whip that big hernia ring closed. And it's actually a real struggle to kind of get those two edges to meet and to get those sutures tied because it's so down deep in the groin. What's happening? Oh, um, baby goat's being born right now. Can you go manage that? I think we're I think okay. So. The towels are here. All right, let's go. Just give it a second. She's in this corner. It's just our luck when we're in the middle of a very difficult hernia repair that this is when Alexa decides to drop her baby. <laughs> oh, gosh. Look at her pushing. We, we can't leave either of these animals, so it, we are extremely fortunate today to have two teams. She's just stalled out. Alexa has been in and out of me thinking she's going to have the baby. It drives me crazy. She has decided to stop. She's up, she's down, she pushing. Is this happening? Should I alert everybody? Here we go. And then nothing happened. She's almost got me to the point that I don't believe that she's actually pregnant. So basically, we're just sitting here, staring at a goat's backside until something happens. 
I'm gonna go back and check. Okay. See how the surgery's doing. Okay, let me know if you need a hand over there. Yeah. Yeah. Now we go digging. So the hernia, it's a very, very large hole. Yeah. You can put a little bit of tension on there, whatever way you want. Uh, okay. It's a little bit of surgical twister because it's like, my hands are in holding, his hands reaching over to get the suture tied. So <laughs> there's a lot of like, left hand on ring, right hand on suture, you know? Left foot still just trying to balance. But it's great that we can work together, literally side by side, elbow to elbow, getting the ring closed. Stop. Just getting louder and louder. Maya struggles with hearing the animals cry or hearing that upset. Oh, come on now. And even though I reassure her that it's, it's not feeling it, we've got it totally blocked, she's very affected by that, which is an awesome part of Maya. Deep into the muscle, not into my finger. Right there? Right there, right on. He's been difficult to keep down under anesthesia, so we've just given him a bunch of top-ups and we're giving that a little bit of time to, to take effect. Okay, I'm gonna go tell Sierra that there's like an emergency or something so that she runs down here and doesn't notice that I hang back and then she gets stuck with this job. Thank you for your help. She doesn't want to keep holding on to him, and I think it's a little bit more fun to go see the baby being born. Sierra, do not need to. Goats are kind of no drama. They kind of just don't care. But pigs, on the other hand, are like a bucket of drama. They said they didn't need someone to hold the, hold the pig down. I knew she was lying. Like, I'm, OK, well, if you want to switch out, you could just say you want to switch out, because I could tell when you're lying. <laughs> Do you work with your kids ever? Do they help you out in the field no. sometimes? No. No, not in the field. <laughs> what do you need? Here, hold right here for just right now. We're just, we're getting close here. As soon as I got in there, I thought I was going to be able to chill out and relax with the goats. I thought I was escaping. So, and she started kidding. <laughs> so then Kelly kind of got in to try and start helping. <gasps> hey, my mom. Um, I'm worried that a piece of the sack broke, which means you got a small amount of time to get baby out. Okay. You want to grab her? Yep. I reach in, I feel her water breaks. Normally, that water breaks as the baby gushes out with the water. That has not happened. OK. Oh, my goodness. As soon as that sack pops, they don't have oxygen anymore. We have a short window of time to get that baby out. This is go time to save this baby's life. Oh, my goodness. Holy. I don't know if it was the sack, but that's what I want you to feel. As she's pushing, a burst of water came out right out to me. <laughs> the sack did just break. <laughs> Alexa is really struggling. This is an emergency. When you have a ruptured amniotic sac and the baby is actually still in the vaginal canal, like it's no longer getting oxygen from the mom, you got to get that baby out within minutes. Okay, there Good you mama. go. Go, 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 go. Come on, honey. I don't want to lose a goat. To lose a would be horrible um, and, a, and a big blow. Come on, son. <laughs> Definitely stay with it. It's a tight. There we go. Oh. Let the towels go. I get it. Take a breath. Oh, there you go. Okay. Alexa has a big headed boy baby. So cute. He's one of the biggest kids that I've seen, and that really explains it. To have such a big kid coming out of a first-time mom is a pretty big stretch. OK, you guys got this part. Okay. Look at that. You did that. Way to go, lady. It makes me nervous any time a vet comes rushing into your pen. I'm not really a trained professional, so I'm really thankful to have one. That was a tough one. She was really struggling, actually. So now that I've got the kid out, I'm getting back to the piglet surgery because Dan and I need to finish this hernia. 
There it is. Yeah, there it is. Do I have the hernia retained? I can't see. I can see it here. Okay. <laughs> Got another baby. Oh, that's a baby. Yep. Almost before we can fully wrap our brains around this, we have another baby like gliding through, and it's fully in its sack, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's okay. I think it's yeah. Oh, it's tiny. Wow. Tiny. Girl. It just flew out. Oh, you look good. I think that that guy was blocking everything up. Yeah. yeah. He's big. Most likely, this kid was kind of ready to come out, but Big Brother was blocking the door. So I'm just rubbing her, and she's starting to come around great. We're making oh, something happen oh, over you're here. you're so good. I'm going to go back to the pigs. OK. We definitely closed up part of it. Oh, it's closed. Nice work. Right Ooh, right, nice. Each time I've had to go and come back, I'm very happy to see that Dan is making progress. So it's really nice to have another vet that's still there finishing the procedure. Oh, we're almost done, friend. We're almost done. It's tough to deal with multiple things happening at once when you're out at a farm, but you know, you can't schedule in births. You know, it's gonna happen whether you're okay. ready or not. And because we were already in one surgery, you just have to multitask and roll with it. Get out, get out, get out, get out. Oh, jeez. Piggy's up running around, he looks great, the incision is all closed up, and we actually got both babies and Alexa. So it was a very successful day. We did it, we did it, we made it. Every single new life is special, unique, and absolutely the best. You think you'd get used to it. You never do, and I'm so thankful for it. I think probably the day that you think it's normal, you should quit, because it's fantastic. Penny. So now that we've got goats kitted and piglets castrated, we're gonna go check in on Chester. It's been a week since he was hit by the four-wheeler and he couldn't quite use his back end, so hopefully he's showing some improvement now. Hey. Hello, hello. Hey! Oh, what? <laughs> oh, oh are you it. kidding me? Chester, come here! So much for keeping him quiet anymore. I know, it's really hard. He looks Come. incredible. Come. Whoa. <laughs> Chester. Oh boy. Chester is doing fantastic. Chester is running. Chester is playing. Chester is jumping. Oh. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Look at him wagging his little tail. Looking at Chester now, I'm kind of blown away. Everything we've done to help him has worked, so <laughs> kind of live for these days. Okay, let's see what you're doing with the back end here, okay? Good boy. Siri, oh, now you know how to do it. Isn't that nuts? No problem. You're passing every test I'm throwing at you. <laughs> every test. <laughs> oh, you're doing so good. Oh, I my goodness. I check up. I'm like, I hope he's not dragging his hind legs. I know. Uh, it's amazing. I can't believe a week ago we were sitting here thinking that Chester would no longer be part of our family. Let's grow something beautiful. You know, you often hear that cats have nine lives. Farm dogs don't get that same <laughs> chance usually. There's only a few times, you know, where I feel like, oh, I absolutely just saved that animal's life. But being right here right now, that just feels like we were here because we needed to be here. And I love that. I love that we were where we needed to be at the right place at the right time where I could help. I love living in this place with you. I love living in this home.